Folks, we have a great actress on with us now. We're going to talk about a brand new film that's coming, Dawn of the Crescent Moon. Tracy Bertzel's on the phone with us. We're going to hear about that and some of our other projects. Tracy, how are you doing? I'm doing great today. Thank you. Well, let's jump right to it. Um, I know it's a frightening kind of thriller kind of film, but tell everybody a little bit about it and what your role is. Sure. I actually, I actually have the role the name of Tracy because I'm friends with the director and producer, and they sent the script over to me and said, hey, see if there's a role in there that you'd be willing to play. So it was it was kind of sneaky on their part, but um, it's it's a thriller. It's set, it's about a legend of Blood Lake, so it's your your you know it's kind of um, where, the, where the kids go out and they're trying to figure out the legend and what's going on and people are dying and this has been going on forever. And then um, I actually play opposite Barry Corbin and Alan Petrusky. We're in the bar and um, Barry plays a role named Cyrus and he is. He's very aware of what the legend is, and we're trying to get the story out of him. And um, so we kind of weave the story throughout the movie while the people are out dying at the lake. <laughs> gotcha. Now, I understand it's, it's like a Comanche legend, so it's something that kind of already exists, kind of a little bit of touch of reality in some of that? It is. It is. And um, it's 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 interesting because there aren't a lot of special effects in it. It reminds me of like an older you know, horror film, and I think that's why people are, if you read about it in some of the reviews and stuff, they're calling it an instant cult classic, horror classic, because it, it reminds you of those old films where you kind of sit on the edge of your seat, and there's the campfire, and the people are disappearing, and yeah, so it's 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 pretty awesome. Actually. Kind of a uh, John Carpenter-esque sort of approach to filmmaking? Exactly. That's great. <laughs> Follow all the rules, right? <laughs> oh, well, you know, I mean, it's just... It's funny how far we've come from that, uh, but there is something very pure and interesting about that. I remember the stories of Jamie Lee Curtis having to give, you know, giving her forty bucks to go down to the store to buy her wardrobe because that was basically all they had to work with and things like that. So, mm-hmm. independent filmmakers tend to be a little more creative and innovative with how to uh, pull certain things off compared to uh, uh, modern day with the CGI and the, the multi-billion-dollar budgets that they seem to have these days. So. Um, exactly, exactly. And they put so much of the money of the budget into um, where we shot and the feel of the place. And we actually shot out in a town called Fayetteville, Texas. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. But it's um, only 264 people or something like that in the whole town. So we kind of took over the town. And everybody seemed to be part of the production, either a PA or a something. You know, they, they brought most of the people in, but put us up in a bed and breakfast. And we just kind of lived there while we shot it, which was really pretty amazing because you bond with the other actors. and you have plenty of time to run your lines together and kind of get into your characters. So that was really nice. So tell us about the co-stars. I know Barry from uh, Northern Exposure. Um, give everybody a little bit about a feel of the cast and, you know, what it was like on set. Okay. Well, Barry ended up being one of my fast friends really fast. We've actually seen each other probably 30 times since we wrapped shooting. We're very good friends. But um, so they had um, Barry, and then they had, you know, the young – Good looking, um, you know, the college students were off doing it. Johnny Walter was in it, and um, Shereen Nelson, she actually won a Best Actress Award for it, which is pretty amazing. Then Brandon Smith played the professor, so he's the one who gave them the assignment of going out, and, and this particular group chose that legend. So everybody went off in different directions to follow different legends, and this is the story as we follow them. What about the legend and the story itself really kind of intrigued you the most? Well, you know, I, I've only been, it's, it's kind of more of a folk, you know, a folk tale. Mm-hmm. So it's it's about a massacre of a Comanche village. And I find it interesting. I actually haven't done much in the way of horror. So for me, you know, I did the, I did the Prophet's Game, which is a, a, a Dennis Hopper flick. And in that, I played a reporter. So again, I'm following, you know, the story, but I'm not one of the people that are, you know, screaming or being killed. So I was just intrigued by the fact, really, of, of doing a horror film and doing it with people that I had known for, you know, 15 years. I've probably known Kevin Coleman, who's the producer in it. And um, and then once they, you know, once, of course I signed on, you know, because they asked me to and because I liked the script. But once they hired Barry, I was just so excited to work opposite Barry Corbin because that guy is just a legend in himself. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tracy Bertzall is talking about Dawn of the Crescent Moon with us. It's a new kind of frightening horror film that's coming out and uh, co-stars Barry Corbin and others. Great, great, great uh, classic throwback to the old style of horror filmmaking, that kind of thing. And, you know, Tracy, I can't help but kind of like throw back myself here a little bit because, you know, your first gig was back on Family Ties, of all things. 
kind of, you know, the loving show. I mean, I felt a little old when I read that, Tracy. To be perfectly well, honest, you know, it's funny because because I I don't I I'm not I'm not going to get into my age. You can probably find it if you look for it. But I never cast my age, and I don't mind being my age. But it's funny because I've been in this industry for a very, very long time. Actually, my first gig was, do you remember the Sun Kiss Soda commercial? Oh, my. Yeah. Old school. Good vibration. Good vibration. Yeah, that, was, that was your first yeah, that, was, that was your first commercial? That was my first SAG commercial job, yeah. Well, so it, it kind of goes back even goes back even further than Family Ties, yeah. <laughs> that that is Because played for school. 10 years. Yeah, Good Vibrations, those commercials played a long time. That was a good run for Sunkiss, and they kind of fell off the map, but maybe they need to resurrect that and bring you back. Exactly, I would like that. Actually, the soda's still available. Some of my friends will buy it and kind of tease me about it. I've done you know, several sodas since then. Everybody waits till your contract runs out, but I still have the orange T-shirt. <laughs> that's, a, that's a Twitter photo waiting to happen if it hasn't already. That's fantastic. <laughs> Oh. I just never thought of that. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it kind of goes way back, and and I've you know I have kind of done this all along, and then I got into production, and and then I actually thought I was retiring. Um, I don't know. It was more than ten years ago. It seems like everything fell off. You know, you, you couldn't do print work after thirty. You couldn't do acting. It used to be the old way. And then I started seeing some of my friends were were working still, and I'd actually taken six years off after I sold my production company, and I was. I was flipping houses and building houses and I'm looking and I'm going, this just isn't fair. Everybody's still working. And I thought it was supposed to be over. So I came back and, you know, produced the film in order to put myself back on the map because a lot of people had either died or retired or weren't in the places that they had been six years ago. I thought it was going to be a lot easier. And um, now I'm working more than ever. I'm attached to so many projects now and um, just very excited. It's going to be a good year. Well, let's get to that, Tracy. What are some of the other stuff that's coming up that you're already working on? Okay, I can tell you about one of them. Okay, I'll, I'll take one. I'll take one. Okay. I'll take one. Yeah, I actually <laughs> signed a new contract yesterday, but I don't Ooh, know what I'm allowed right. to say about it yet. Yeah, and it's so exciting. But this one that I'm shooting in November, I'm actually co-producing with Neil Johnson, who's a director of science fiction films, very, very well-known um, science fiction film director. And we're showing, sh- shooting in, starting November 1st, and um, it's called The Scent of the Maelstrom. And it, it's a combination of science fiction, time travel, just, you know, it's just a very, very cool script. And he, he was sending me some of, his, some of his stuff that he'd written before, because he told me he had these great scripts, and he sent this over, and I read it. And I just fell in love with it. I'm, I'm like, no, I have to help you make this. We have to make this, like, now. I mean, it's just, it's, it's fantastic. I'm so excited to be a part of it. Um, that's pretty awesome. How many how many scripts are at home right now on your desk? I read two yesterday, and I'm working on the second contract negotiation on them. And I have six that I haven't read, and I have six other things that I'm attached to. That's amazing. It's crazy. It's crazy, and I just love it because I I it's I'd, I'd rather work than anything, and you know? I just love working. It's so much fun. It is great stuff. It is great to talk to somebody that's been in the business for so long with all these great stories. Like, you have like a really cool like behind the scenes story that you'll share with us. Do I have a really cool what? One of those behind the scenes scenes stories, like, oh, you can't believe this actually happened, or whatever. Throw anything out at us. On on Donna the Crescent Moon. Oh my gosh, Um, there's one I can't tell you. (laughs) Of course there is. There's always one that we can't know, but maybe you know next time we'll get it out of you. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I think I've signed a non-disclosure on it by now. But um, well, you know, the cool thing about working on Dawn of the Crescent Moon, like I said, is the town is shaped like a rectangle. So there's a park in the middle, and there's basically one bar, one restaurant, one bed and breakfast, and you know, so we used all of these locations. And um, the the first night, I mean, we shot I don't know 13 pages in one day because Barry Corbin was off book, I was off book, Alan was off book, and it just flowed. So we were. And then we we stayed in the bar that night, and Joe Joe Simpson he owns Joe's place there, and he just kept that place open until like three thirty in the morning, and he fed us and gave us all the alcohol we wanted, which we of course had way too much, and um, so it was just a fantastic time of it because we didn't shoot till four o'clock the next day, so it wasn't like we were sacrificing anything, but um, so anyway, the part that I can't tell you happened after that, but. <laughs> And then Barry had his birthday party while we were there. And so it was funny because all these people came in and he's looking around. He didn't even know that, that we were doing it. And it was just 
that was very cool. God, I wish I could tell you that story, but I just can't. It's fine. <laughs> I understand our listeners can uh, fill in the gaps themselves. Dawn of the Crescent Moon, Tracy Bird saw. It sounds like a great horror film, and I think uh, we'll link to uh, some of the website stuff there. Make sure people can pick that up. Do you give out your uh, Facebook and Twitter so people can connect with you? Sure. My Facebook is www. Oh, actually, my website, which links to everything, is www.tracybirdsall.com, and that's T-R-A-C-E-Y-B-I-R-D-S-A-L-L.com. And there's links to my Facebook, IMDb, Twitter is Tracy Birdsall one Instagram is Tracy Birdsall one so. Okay. We will definitely link all that up and have all that hooked up for you. Okay. Thank you so much.